Uh, hi, this is Alex, uh, Alex Ahad, the creative director for Skullgirls. I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, some of the creative and artistic uh, direction behind the, behind the latest character, Kangel. Um She's actually personally one of my favorites. Um, I'm not sure if I, if I should technically say if I have favorites or not, but she, she's definitely uh, one, of, one of my top ones. And I had a lot of specific uh, art direction when it came to the way she moved and the type of moves that she had and the personality that she would convey in the game. Um, in terms of the story, she's she's an ASG kind of like Peacock, but instead of the lab that Peacock came from, the lab that she came from was was known as Lab Zero, which actually had a different kind of set of rules compared to how Peacock came together. So um, the lab that she came from was a lot less ethical in a lot of ways. So she ended up uh, a lot more messed up. Um, she was a she was a more innocent uh, character before before the experiment, and inside she still has some of that aspect, but. but because of the because of the pain and the hatred that, that she has in her, it has uh, kind of warped her into this sort of monster. Um, however, there's you know there's a certain kind of charm to her that's like hidden behind that. Uh, in terms of how she plays, it's it's very aggressive and uh, very brutal. Like that super, we hit, we were fine tuning in a lot of ways to make sure it it um, conveyed the kind of uh, pain and aggression that she has. Among all the characters, she shakes the, the camera the most, and a lot of our attacks feel really heavy. Even if she has like flight and uh, a lot of those type of properties, the actual movements that she does make her feel like she's made out of a really heavy, dense material. <laughs> So, you know, obviously things like uh, her, her super armor properties also reflect this kind of like stubborn angerness to her to her personality. Like the way she throws and her, her super armor kind of uh, convey this kind of like, I don't care what you're doing, I'm going to hit you with what I want to hit you with. And it's going to hurt like real bad. Um, you know, there's uh, really cool stuff like that going on. And of course she's got her wheel. Um, it's interesting, she's, she's also another character that we've like uh, learned a lot of things in terms of character creation with. She's actually one of the most difficult characters to animate because she has a lot of detail with her, both internally and like just like the shape that she is and the way she moves is very strange. Uh, the wheel is actually based on a 3D model. We still draw it by hand, but we have a 3D model as reference. So this is like one of the first characters that, uh, in Skullgirls, obviously, uh, to, um, to use this type of uh, guidance. And it, it helped a lot because that wheel is incredibly difficult to draw without any sort of model. Uh, especially since it's actually shaped like a pinwheel uh, and it's like interlaced leaves of blades. But it, it was pretty cool like uh, using that in combination with like the generally more organic nature of her own body and the fact that she can like twist and bend her body and literally break her bones in order to hurt you more. Uh, her wheel is kind of a nice contrast to that because it's kind of like this very uh, me mechanical, uh, very rigid oh. shape compared to her. So in a lot of ways, even though she was tough, she, she turned out really great, and uh, a lot of a lot of our attacks have uh, you know a special kind of pacing to them that like convey a special level of aggression. <laughs> We actually spent a long time trying to do things like, oh hey, let's, hold on, don't kill me. Uh, we actually spent a long time trying to do things like get the wheel to feel heavy. Like you'll actually notice um, when I swing it regularly, it's got blur, right? But when it actually makes contact during the hit stop, there's no blur. But uh, for the last couple of frames of hit stop, it starts to move again and blurs more uh, block. Yeah. So what that does is it actually makes it feel a lot heavier than if you stopped it with blur or if it didn't have blur the entire time. Um, we spent a long time trying to make sure that the weight that he wanted was conveyed in all the rest of her stuff. Like everything, pretty much everything that she has has some type of camera shake on it as opposed to most of the other characters. Um, even if you miss, oh, that's right. Right, so there's camera shake on just executing almost everything and uh, the timing of a lot of stuff and the hit pause, I'm going to not let time expire, um, was one of the things that we spent like at least a couple of days just trying to get right before we started making the rest of her. Uh, it influences how she plays because a lot of her stuff gives you a lot of time to confirm since there's so much pause. But overall, it really helps her feel heavy. Like, if you contrast this with
this, there's a huge difference because this is a bunch of really light hits and it doesn't have any pause and it doesn't have any camera shake um, and it doesn't even have other types of hit sparks on them. Uh, the contrast between her and other characters is really what makes her seem that much heavier and that much stronger. If everybody were like this, then it would be H and K and you would get a very different sense of of how the game felt out of it, but you wouldn't be able to differentiate her as much from the rest of the cast. Um, you probably noticed that we're starting to implement like more hit sparks like that, the slap that uh, Cerebella just did, and a lot of, uh, yeah, the elbow has the blunt effect, and like uh, a bunch of uh, pain meals attacks have like a slash effect, so we've been implementing like more, more effects are coming in. Um, there's more updates to the backgrounds, like there's more animated NPCs, and uh, you know, we're uh, fine tuning a lot of things like that. Uh, you'll probably notice also that uh, we're working on UI stuff. Like, there's a there's a site there's a indicator of who's winning, even which is sometimes hard to figure out uh, in versus games because you have several bars to to figure out the math with. But that indicator at the top tells that player one, for example, here is in the lead. And also, um, when you reach a level five super bar, uh, you'll notice that the bar is like flashing more, so it's it's more visible when you have a, a full meter. Uh, actually, yeah, it's who's ahead on life. That's not necessarily who's winning because other factors contribute to it, uh, but it definitely does help, especially in three on three or like one versus three, where the a third of the one character's health bar is equivalent to a whole character on the other team. Yeah. So it definitely does help figure out how you want to plan your strategy, which is kind of interesting because you don't have to estimate anymore, right? If it's five seconds left and you are not in the lead, then you actually want to do something, even if it looks close. We're going to be at SoCal Regionals this coming weekend. Uh, we're actually going to have an official Skullgirls tournament. Uh, the prize is going to be $1,000. Divided among top eight. Divided among top eight. This is a quick look at the latest uh, version of Skullgirls uh, coming out early 2012. This is Alex Hud, the creative director. Thank you. As a final send-off, here's a sneak peek at what's coming up in Skullgirls, our next character. And it's this!